reaching us through live streaming. Restrooms are located in the Perry Center lobby right here to your left. We are in need of ministers of hospitality. If you can help, please speak with one of the ministers to sign up. It will involve coming earlier to Mass and staying a few minutes later to prepare and sanitize. All our supplies are furnished. Our annual Thanksgiving collection goes directly to the needy. This year, the money we collect will be used to purchase meals for the Interface Shelter to help with the food necessities for parishioners at Our Lady of Guadalupe and for other charities supported through our Faith in Action team. Please be generous. If you do not attend Mass on Thanksgiving, you can bring your donation to the parish office or donate on Faith Direct with the notation, Food for the Needy. Mass on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, will be at 9 a.m. here in the plaza. You may bring your bread to Mass to be blessed. This weekend has been designated for the 2020 collection for the national needs. Special envelopes are located near the collection boxes. You may return the envelope next weekend in one of the collection boxes or at the Ministry Center. Just in time for Advent, the new book for Father Mike by Father Mike titled, Rabbi, Where Are You Staying? Daily Reflections on the Word of God during Advent and Christmas. They are available on Amazon and in the Ministry Center. And now for our liturgy. Today we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Our presider is Father Sheen, He'll be assisted by Deacon Bob Griffin. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. We'd like to extend a very warm welcome to each and every one of you here this morning to the celebration of the Mass. And also we welcome those who are following the celebration and live streaming. It's great that we all can be together on this beautiful feast of Christ the King. This is the last day of the liturgical year, the last Sunday. Christ the King. And uh, today at this Mass there would be a simple sign of peace. Uh, we don't reach out all over the place with my gesture to the people around us. If it's family, it might be a little different, but just a little gesture of peace that would be great at that time. When we think of a king, we think of somebody very remote and far away who rules over his people. When we think of Christ the King, we think of Christ who is with us at this moment, at this Mass, uh, very, very present to us, who came to love us and to serve us, and to show us how to love, and to show us how to serve one another. The best time uh, probably for the Gospel today would be right now, to help us to examine our conscience. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. But I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was sick and you visited me. Or I was sick and you did not come to see me. So listen very attentively today to the gospel. It helps us to um, live our lives more fully. Because the greatest evil in the world today is the lack of love, the lack of love. Jesus came to love us and to help us to love one another. Let's call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whose will it is, is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe. Grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered, when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In burden, excuse me, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for the years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead also will come through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me. Ill and you cared for me in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say this to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, Whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome naked and you gave me no clothing, ill and in prison and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? And he will answer them, amen I say to you, when you did not do for one of these least ones you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I don't know about you, but uh, life uh, these last uh, nine months have been uh, like a, a movie that I'm watching, uh, wondering what's going to happen today. Uh, not getting too close to it. You know, it's on the screen, the screen of life, uh, be it Coronado or California or the United States or whatever. Um, not really connected to it, just kind of watching the world go by, so as to speak. Not wanting to get too close to it uh, for, uh, for health reasons, uh, but, but trying to stay uh, tuned in, dialed in to what's going on. And it can be that way sometimes as we go through these annual cycles of Gospels. We have just spent um, 11, almost 12 months studying the Gospel of Matthew. How much of Matthew do you remember? Uh, the Sermon on the Mount, the uh, Beatitudes, uh, the many, many parables that have been taught. Uh, 
you know, they just kind of go by almost as a, like a movie on the screen, don't they? You know, we, we hear them uh, Sunday after Sunday and they sound wonderful, but do they become a part of our, of who we are as a person? Well, here we are at the very last uh, reading from Matthew for this cycle. And I really don't want any of us to miss this one. This, in a, in a way, is the great ta-da. This is where Jesus is saying to his disciples, uh, for the very last time, this is what really counts in the eyes of God. This is what I'm asking you to do if you want to be with me for eternal life. And I don't know about you, but I often sit out there uh, in, in the congregation and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I hope I hear something today that will help me find the right path and give me some assurance that, um, that eternal life is even possible for me, you know, that I can find my way somehow. And that's what our Lord is, is, is doing today. He's giving us uh, his last parable in very simple, straightforward terms so that we can uh, embrace it and we can enflesh it. Let's take a look at the gospel. Uh, Jesus tells us that judgment does not depend on our knowledge that we've amassed. It doesn't depend on fame and fortune. Uh, it doesn't depend on any of those things. But it depends on what we've given. That's right, what we have given. How we have shown love and care and concern for other people. How we have reached out to those that are in need. Now, there's certain things that this parable teaches us to help us uh, better understand what Jesus has in mind. And the first is this. He says, help in simple things. Help in small things. Uh, a person who's hungry, give them some food. A person who's thirsty, a bottle of water. A person who's cold, a jacket, a sweater, a sweatshirt, whatever you happen to have. Um, this morning we have a, a new altar server who's just come from Virginia Beach, new to the parish. You know, we welcome our new parishioners and her family to our parish. Um, we have friends that are sick or shut in, people we haven't seen in a while. Give them a call. Reach out and touch them. It doesn't have to be with uh, an elaborate uh, bit of information or you know, you're not sure what to say. Just call up and say, how are you? And then be quiet and let them tell you how they are. It can be that simple. Touch people with your prayers. Uh, a month ago, I was preaching on the great commandment when we love God and love our neighbor. And I, be honest with you, I'm not sure that I was that loving to our neighbors. We were more concerned about trees that were hanging over a fence. And, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna start praying for my neighbors. And my whole mental attitude has changed with respect to how I feel about my neighbors. I care about them uh, much more deeply than I ever have before. Just by each day praying for them and their needs whatever they may be, uh, talking to Jesus about our neighbors. Uh, so we touch people with our prayers in these very uh, simplest of ways. There's a story of Martin of Tours, perhaps you've heard before he was a priest, he was a Roman soldier. And one uh, evening he was coming back into town and he was confronted by a, a, a beggar who asked for alms, asked for money, and Martin uh, didn't have any money, uh, but he took a look at the beggar, and the beggar was turning blue. He was so cold, standing out there on the, on the roadway. And Martin um, uh, took his cloak off and took his knife and cut, cut his coat in half. And it was an old army coat that uh, was kind of threadbare in many places, uh, but it was all that he had, and he gave part of it to this um, beggar. And, uh, and then he went home. 
And uh, he, Martin shared that uh, later that night he had a dream. And in the dream, he was dreaming that he was in heaven. And uh, Jesus was there surrounded by his angels. And Jesus was wearing this old army coat, half of an army coat. And, and the angel said to the Lord, why are you wearing this old coat? And he said, because it was given to me by my servant, Martin. So the point is when we serve the least of our brothers and sisters, we're serving our Lord. The second point that Jesus makes in today's gospel reading is that our, our charity is uncalculating. In other words, we're not doing it for what's in it for us. We're not doing it so that uh, we can tell Father Murphy uh, at confession or Father Sheehan how, how charitable we have done. It's not to gain points. It's not to look good. It's not to get credit or get our name in a, in a program uh, someplace or, or on a plaque. It's to be um, a, a simple anonymous gift. We uh, are called to be a people of charity who, who give at, at every opportunity. Uh, no benefits to us other than the, the inner peace that comes from helping another person. And finally, the third lesson, which is kind of buried in the words, is that Jesus tells us a surprising secret. And that is that he lives in and through every person. That, quite honestly, it's the Jesus in me that recognizes and respects and, and, re and serves the Jesus in you. Uh, Jesus is within each and every one of us. And so when we love our neighbor, we are loving God at the same time because God lives in and through each one of us. Just absolutely amazing. God has made it possible for us to love him and love our neighbor. This is God's plan. Uh, he's given some people resources and other people few or none with the understanding that in his plan, we will redistribute what we can to help others. That's what we're called to do. In our New Testament reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, Paul tells us that the internal kingdom, the eternal kingdom, belongs to all who belong to Christ. Let us be sure that we belong. In the Old Testament reading from the prophet Ezekiel, Ezekiel tells us that this life matters. It's not a movie. We're not called to just kind of be present and watch the world go by. We're called to, uh, to make a difference, to extend ourselves, to be all in in the needs of others. Uh, so what can we do? You know, it's very, very interesting. Uh, sometimes as I'm listening to the announcements before mass starts, it sounds like uh, it's some sort of a marketplace. We're having a food drive for this, and we're collecting uh, uh, donations for that, and we're doing this and we're doing that. And, and there's times when I'm thinking, you know, is that really our message? And in looking at today's gospel, that is our message, isn't it? That's what this parish is all about. It's creating opportunities for us to be able to reach out and touch those in need. It's creating that food drive with the church across the bridge, Our Lady of Guadalupe, uh, which is going on this weekend, where we can bring food stuff to the parish office or call uh, a number that's in the bulletin to Bridget Carlson, and she'll pick it up at our home. Uh, but make, make a donation, make a difference to people who are two miles away from here uh, so that they can have uh, what they need uh, to get through the day without wondering if they're going to have breakfast, lunch, or dinner today. They know that they've got some food. This is what we can do. There are many other things that are listed in our parish bulletin, opportunities for us to be uh, people of, of giving, to make the connection 
with the people that are in need. Uh, another wonderful charity is uh, Across the Border, uh, Casa de los Pobres. We've heard about that. Father Gill uh, was the chaplain there and said mass there every week. And uh, that provides food in Tijuana for the poorest of the poor and is always worthy and in need of our help, as is Father Joe's village. So in conclusion, I'd like you to remember the three steps. The three steps to the heavenly commitment. Do you remember what they are? Simple, small, charitable things. Given without any expectation of recognition, given anonymously. And finally, the person that we're giving it to is God himself. God who is in that wonderful disguise of the needy person who is there to uh, receive and thank and to love us in return. Remember that Jesus in me sees and respects the Jesus in you. Amen. Let us at this time profess our faith in the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My respond, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now let us lift up our petitions and prayers for ourselves and for all those who are in need. For the church, that we will serve Christ the King by imitating his mercy in, speaking out, in seeking out the lost and caring for the sick and injured, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For righteousness, to guide our world and fraternal charity, direct our actions toward the least of our brothers and sisters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women of our armed services, for the medical corps, and all who care for the sick, wounded, and suffering, both on foreign soil and at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all battling COVID-19, and all the sick and injured in body, mind, or spirit, for Xavier Tan, Mark Basillo, Raymond Prez, Terry Francois, that the Lord will shepherd them and bring them healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have fallen asleep in Christ, especially Manny Arce, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And also we pray for Jane Courtney and Hannah Kelly. May they rise to the fullness of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer from the silence of our hearts and for ourselves and those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Let us offer up these prayers and also those that are still in our hearts through the intercession of Mary. Heal Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners, now and at yeah, the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen.
My sisters and brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice into your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the of the church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present to the immensity of your majesty the eternal and universal kingdom, the, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until, until come. you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, John and Ramon his auxiliaries, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. <clears throat> Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace. That's good. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us This is Jesus Christ, our King, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
out a farmer line coming up along this way. There will also be a Eucharistic minister outside the main door of the church. You can also drop your envelope or donation on the box as you come by. Thank you. Just please observe distancing. To stand and pray.
having received the food of immortality, we ask, O oh Lord, <coughs> that, <coughs> excuse me, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, <coughs> we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you all for being here this morning and participating in the Mass. It's just beautiful out here. <clears throat> and also those following in live streaming. What a grace, what a blessing for all of us. And uh, <clears throat> there's a young girl who's serving Mass here for the first time. Her name is uh, Kate Gregory. Okay, a little bit that everybody can see you. <clears throat> and she and her family moved from Virginia Beach a couple of weeks ago. Where are your family out there? Can you yeah. see them? Oh, they're right there in the back. Would you like to welcome them? There's a mom and a little girl back there. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Judy. Thank you, thank you. And um, Thanksgiving, there's a beautiful prayer here written by Father Mike Murphy. And you're free to take one after uh, Mass. That'd be right up here. And uh, if you'd like to take one, you can read it at uh, the Thanksgiving table. And uh, that would be very good. If you'd have to come to Mass on Thanksgiving morning, and we encourage you, 9 o'clock Mass, and uh, you might bring some bread or some food that will be used at Thanksgiving meal, and it would be blessed here at the Mass. Just in case we don't see you on Thanksgiving, we hope you all have a very, very happy Thanksgiving day with your family and loved ones. And um, I know it's difficult with the uh, COVID-19, but um, there are many other blessings that God has bestowed upon us. That could be a blessing in disguise. A blessing in disguise. For all those who love God, all things work together unto good. So have a very wonderful day today. And we thank all of our ministers and Deacon uh, Bob for his wonderful homily and all those who serve Mass today and the volunteers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be kind to one another. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel with your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.